Welcome back to the Quapaw Quarter in downtown Little Rock, Arkansas. Today, we are in the Polk House. Well, welcome in to the gorgeous 1895 Polk House here on Broadway in downtown Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm walking you around in this circle because you have to see how much original woodwork remains unpainted in this beautiful space. So let's walk through these original interiors and talk about what's really special in this house. And we have to start out with the one story tower room. We don't ever see these. We have a one-story beautiful tower room that has a window seat surrounding its circumference that does open. It does have storage, but how spectacular is this entryway? Your first steps into this home are absolutely breathtaking. One of my must-haves on my real estate bucket list is a double-doored vestibule and this is one of the finest we've seen and it's a very modest home we have these absolutely glorious double leaded glass front doors and then complete woodwork on the walls we have this diamond accent element that mimics the diamond work on the leaded glass that is set within the woodwork looks like a mix of cypress and pine beautifully stained egg and dart molding and parquet floors to top it all off, we have the original entryway light with its original glass. From there, we have the front door with its laurel wreath design, dental molding, and egg and dart trim. I'm sorry, that's just how I feel. I'm so in love with this tiger oak mantle that's never been painted. The detail on this is absolutely extraordinary. We've got egg and dart design. These gorgeous foliate column capitals, but I'm really intrigued by this design. So I'm, I'm certain this is not a Millard mantelpiece. I don't think Millard made home interiors, but there was a furniture manufacturer out of New Orleans. He had uh, workshops in New Orleans and workshops in New York, whose last name was Millard. He was a Frenchman, but it was spelled Mallard. And the duck egg emblem was his emblem on all of his furniture. So it's all signed with the duck egg. And these are so similar to that Millard signature. I just find them fascinating. Um, even if they're not Millard, they're definitely Millard influence, which was about 50 years earlier than the period of this home, but absolutely stunning. And I love these stamped brick tiles that remain. I mean, this looks, this entire mantle and surround look like it was put in yesterday. This front room looks like it looked when it was built in 1895, and I am absolutely in love from the chandelier to the picture rail to the beautiful functioning pocket doors. Let's take a look at those. Please observe the ease with which this enormous pocket door still rolls, and these are the same. Look at this just like butter.
We never see that. And now we're in the front parlor, an absolutely stunning space with another prize of a mantelpiece. Again, in absolutely original condition oak, high ornamentation. We're in that period in 1895 when we're starting to transition out a very formal themed style. So right before this, we have the Eastlake movement and the aesthetic movements. And both of those had very rigid rules about style defined by Charles Eastlake in his book. Um, we're coming out of that in 1895 and we're starting to see a return to naturalistic motifs. So we have more of the foliate design. We see more fluidity of theme here than we would in an earlier mantelpiece. And I love to be able to walk into a home like this and see transition in architecture taking place right here. We have all of our original tile, both on the hearth and the surround. This brass insert is to die for. And then of course you have all of your original windows unpainted with your beautiful diamond painting on the top. The dining room, another absolutely extraordinary room. So we've just passed through those beautiful sliding pocket doors that I showed you. And we are in a stunning room, huge spaces. Look at this absolutely monumental arch. You have a gorgeous light fixture that originally would have been a gasolier, now converted to electric, a beautiful bay, and behind me, another gorgeous period mantle. Another one in oak. You'll see all the mantle pieces in this house are in oak. And that's something that I talk about when I talk about decorating your Victorian home, and boy, did I get pushback from modern decorators when I said this. You can use as many species of wood in decorating your historic home as you want because we find in the construction of these homes many different species of wood. So in this room alone, we have pine, we have cypress, and we have oak, three very different woods. They all have very different wood tones, but it makes the interior rich, but also gives it dimension. So you don't feel like when you're decorating your home, you have to stick with one wood. But in here we have these stunning chartreuse colored tile surrounds and a gas insert, probably from the 1930s, which I think is really, really charming. But one of my favorite details in this room, come over here with me, is this little beauty. Look at this, I'm scared, to, I don't even really wanna to touch it. This is an armed gas fixture that retains its original ruby glass shade. When this is lit, you can see that this is ruby glass and its topper. This would have contained any of the soot or smoke fumes, kept those from escaping and making marks on your wall. Your key is still present. Everything is still here. And I love that that remains in this beautiful room. This door would have originally been to your butler's pantry, lots of storage in there. It's since been gutted, so it is ready for you to bring back amazing turn of the century butler's pantry cabinets, and I know the perfect place for you to get those. Now let's take a look at the other large room down here, which is the billiard hall, right through this archway. I'm starting over here in the dark, so you can see the scale of these doors. Now this looks like a relatively modestly sized home from the front, much like our home Scotty does and Pearl does. But when you get inside, the spaces are monumental. These are probably 13 foot ceilings and many of the doors in here are eight or nine feet. But this is the billiard hall. It's been used as the game room for years and years and years. And look what we have over here. We have a jib door. The window raises these come into the room and you can exit out onto the front porch. Here's a weird thing, and I'm gonna show it to you because I don't want anybody surprised. This is an original door to the front porch. It still has its gorgeous original hardware, but you open it up and that's the exterior front wall. <laughs> the current owner decided that they didn't want a double door from the porch like we have at Scotty, and so they closed it in, but that could very, very easily be returned, and you could have a secondary entrance out onto your porch. All right. Beautiful, the more double doors. These double doors are mimicking the double doors at the front. Again, we see that Victorian 
thoughtfulness in design. But I want to give you an idea about the layout of this house. So we've seen the entryway, the front parlor, the back parlor, the billiard hall. Now we're going to go into the back of the house. We are crossing through what possibly, very possibly, originally might have been an open breezeway. I don't know that, but it wouldn't have been uncommon. On the right hand side, we have a small bedroom. And on the left hand side, we have what's left of an early bath. I don't think an original bath, but we do have early tile probably from the 20s. And then opposite it is that butler's pantry I told you about. More original trim into the kitchen space. Now, this is another space that needs a huge amount of love and work, but is this home more than worth it? Absolutely. Take a look around this space. You have an archway that has the original woodwork mimicking the one exiting out of that billiard hall, and you have a monumental amount of space. You could either use all of it for kitchen, or you could do what's been done currently with a smaller kitchen and a breakfast room with a study. But what the important thing that you have here is space, plenty of space to do whatever you want to do, whatever you can envision. And the price point of this house, though not inexpensive, certainly allows for the remodeling of this space. Well, here we are in the back bedroom of the three. The bedrooms are the only spaces in this house that I would think you might think are moderate sized but let's be real how much time do we actually spend in our bedrooms during the day large bedrooms of all the things that I would want in a historic home a super large bedroom is really not on the list I want huge living spaces I want a huge kitchen space and you have that here but what's great about this back bedroom a first floor bedrooms all three of them B, we're at the very back of the house so we're removed from any street noise and C, there is a bathroom right here. Now, right now it has a bathtub and tile on the floor from the 1920s, which I would do anything to retain, but it does need a little bit of updating. Somebody at some point glued some fantastic faux marble to the walls that needs to be taken down. But with a little bit of care and a little bit of attention, you could turn this space into an absolutely exquisite first floor suite. And if you don't need three bedrooms, which a lot of people don't, the second smaller bedroom attaches right here. So you could very easily convert these three spaces into one very large main level main suite. Just an idea for you. For those of you who might be thinking this is the house for you. I do want to point out that once again, every door, every window has its original brass hardware. All of the windows in this house are original. You have all of the corner protectors in the room. This house is so intact. It's been in the same family for a number of decades and remaining in the same family keeps these homes intact. So it's looking for its next steward, but you better be somebody who's going to take care of it. Okay. We've shown you one option for a main suite. If you want to do a main suite, but we wanted to show you a second idea, a way to create a main suite that isn't going to change the floor plan of the house, not going to change the footprint. You'll not be doing anything with walls, but we'll give you the opportunity to design a much larger main bedroom space. So you have the front parlor, you have the back parlor, which could easily serve as your dining room with the way that the rooms connect to the kitchen space. Then you have that enormous entryway. The front two parlors are all the living space that any modern family needs. We don't need a formal parlor and an informal parlor, really. So this room, unless you do in fact happen to have a pool table, becomes a little superfluous. It sort of loses any function. So why not turn it into your main bedroom? And what does a main bedroom need? But a main bathroom. And right off of this room is the first of the three small bedrooms. So let's take a look at this space. This space would make the most spectacular main bath and closet space. Closet on with this wall perhaps, all of your plumbing on the opposite wall. I don't know, there's so many ways to work in this space to create a main bath, again, without having to remove any of your doorways without having to change the footprint of this house, which in these historic homes is important not to be doing left and right willy nilly. I want to show you something that's going to scare a lot of people to death when they come in this house. I don't want to tell you why not to be afraid of it. Do you remember when we walked through the hallway and I said, I think this probably was originally an open breezeway connecting the house to the kitchen or at least partially open. I've got evidence of that. It looks like 
our floors have a terrible slope right here. It looks like we have a terrible problem with the foundation. But if you stand on the foundation, while there is a slope, there's, there's no softness, there's no moving, there's nothing that indicates that this is actually a foundation problem. What I think this probably is, where all of these floorboards have been tied together, you can clearly see where they've been put in, and the slope is, this is where the house originally stopped, and this was the back porch, which naturally would have had a slope for water runoff. And so that's what we're seeing right here. And then these walls were added, and we closed the back of the house at some point, probably not very long after the house was built, probably within a few years. We can really maybe discover that by looking at the Sanborn maps. I'd love to take a look at those and see if we can determine that is the case. But this doesn't appear to be a structural issue. So a great option for a main suite downstairs. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this look at the Polk House. The reason I get so excited when I read this was the Polk House. That's my family name. My mother's people were Polks. James K. Polk was my fifth great uncle, and I can trace my Polk lineage all the way back to some of the first kings of Scotland. So it's no wonder that I walked into this house and fell in love. This is the Polk House in the Quapaw Quarter of Little Rock, Arkansas, and it's looking for its next steward. Is that you? Now remember, we are absolutely not the real estate agents. We do not represent this house in any way, shape, or form, nor do we guarantee it. We're just here to share the architectural beauty and all of its details with you. Everything you need to know about the listing, from the price to the square footage to the terms, are in the Zillow listing in the description below. So if you enjoyed this video today, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss another one of these great house tours or our hands-on restoration guides. And we'll see you next time on Preservation Travels with Lane and Kevin.